Now Apollo is armed with a bow and arrow, but he's not a god of hunters. He has a weapon as a prominent attribute, but he is not a soldier. So what is his prime characteristic? Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Really good to see you. Today, we're gonna actually talk about the god Apollo, a figure who has often been described, not without reason, as the most Greek of the gods. The Greekiest, the, the most Greek. I don't know, like whichever way you wanna say it. The easiest way to see this is the study of the archaic Kuro statues. Now the Kuroi have often been said to represent the god Apollo. And while that may be seen as a misconception today, it is still true that the Kuros, or the sculptured ideal of the acme or pinnacle of physical and mental development, probably stands for the god Apollo above all other divinities in the Greek pantheon. That youth was raised to this certain abstract ideal state gives Greek culture some of its atmosphere, some of its peculiar character. Some might even call it a purified or elevated character. Although this would be a little bit more likely if you were someone like Winkelmann. The god of this culture indisputably is Apollo. But today in particular, we're gonna look at Apollo as a healing god. When our most important written sources start about 700 BCE with the Iliad, Apollo is already one of the most important gods. In myth, he was always referred to as the son of Zeus and Leto, the younger twin brother of Artemis. However, there's always been a certain impression that Apollo is not only a youthful god, but also a new god to the Greeks. There's no clear evidence for him in Linear B, and his sanctuary in Delphi was not founded before the 8th century BCE. Some pretty strong evidence seems to point to the fact that Apollo was a god of Asia Minor, or more specifically, Lycia in modern-day Turkey. One of his most famous epithets is Lycaos, which could mean wolf god, or light god, or maybe just person from Lycia. The Iliad actually connects him with this area of ancient Lycia. He's the god of the warriors of the Iliad who come from Lycia. Now there's also this series of Apolline oracles running up and down the coast of Asia Minor, the most famous of which is Didyma, which we'll discuss in a little bit. Apollo possesses two sanctuaries, which are sacred to all the Greeks, and which exerted an almost missionary influence on the Greek culture which worshipped him. Those are Delos and Delphi. Delos is an island at the center of the Cyclades archipelago, separated from Renea or Greater Delos by a channel about one kilometer wide. The small, now uninhabited island is defined by the bare conical Mount Kynthus, and actually Kynthian is another epithet of Apollo, which rises in its center to a height of about 113 meters. The Homeric Hymn to Apollo describes the island Delos as the place where Apollo and his sister Artemis were born, where the Ionian Greeks would gather in celebration to worship the god Apollo with choral dancing and music. The sanctuary of Apollo lies to the west of the island. A huge 8.5 meter high statue of the god dedicated by the Naxians, a nearby island community, stood nearby. This statue's huge monumental base is actually still visible today. In archaic times, the oracles contributed more to Apollo's fame than anything else. Delphi and its sanctuary and precinct of Apollo lie on the south slope of Mount Parnassus. This temple was where the oracle, called the Pythia, would prophesy from her seat on a bronze tripod in the sunken adyton, or inner sanctum, of the main temple. A celebrant, seeking an oracular response from the god, would enter the sanctuary and hike up the long, winding, sacred way, passing the large number of votive statues and treasury houses along the way. He or she would arrive at the temple and present an offering to the god Apollo, in hope of receiving oracular pronouncement and succor aid in their predicament. There was also a pentateric or every four-year festival at Delphi, the Pythian Games. These games always involved a musical agon or competition, a competition for voice and the lyre, and of course the sporting events, with sprints and horse racing especially popular. The victor was presented with a laurel wreath, a tradition revived in Renaissance times with the crowning of a poeta laureatus, a poet laureate. Apollo is a god of healing. If you were someone in need of assistance, you would sing a paean to Apollo. The paean consisted of a refrain, i.e. paean, and then a call for your divine helper or healer, and then actually the details of your situation and what you needed the aid for would have to be included in this prayer. The song, the paean, could also be used in thanksgiving, after aid had already been rendered, or not, <laughs> or as a request for Apollo's presence on the battlefield, which is somewhat surprising. As always with gods, aid and goodwill needed to be prayed for assiduously and obsequiously. Taking the gods' presence for granted could get you in trouble. 
the paean could be not only a request for healing, but also a hymn which appeased Apollo's very significant wrath. We will see that Apollo could be an extremely dangerous god when angry. In later times, the term paean was obviously exclusively an epithet for Apollo and a name for his song, and it appeared mostly in contexts where the god was needed to ward off evil and disease. The temple at Bassi in the high mountains of Arcadia was erected following the plague which ravaged Greece in 430 BCE and killed the Athenian general Pericles. It was dedicated to Apollo in his role as a healer, the helper Epicurios, or the averter of evil Alexikakos. Now at Didyma, the famous oracular temple of Apollo on the Ionian coast, a priest of Apollo named Brancos, who is ancestor of the priestly line of the Brancidae, banished a nasty plague to gain his status as head priest. Didyma was associated with the famous Ionian city Miletus, was the regional sanctuary between the territory of Caria and Ionia. Didymo is home to temples to both Apollo and Artemis, and the currently standing 4th century temple is one of the best preserved and most impressive monuments in the entire ancient world. We get a pretty full picture from Strabo the geographer and scholar of the Augustan period. Apollo's arrow strikes from a distance. And striking from afar is how Apollo's epithets, Hecatebolos, Hecabolos, and Hecatos have always been understood. This aspect is especially prominent at his oracle at Delphi, where the Pythia, with the help of the Prophetes or interpreter, gave predictions which were famously ambiguous and indeterminate. Apollo's epithet Loxius means oblique or obscure. For example, when the archaic Lydian monarch Croesus wanted some advice about his impending invasion of Persia, he was told, you will destroy a great kingdom. Unfortunately, it turned out it was his own. Another example is just before Xerxes' invasion of Greece, the Athenians consulted Apollo Loxias about the defense of their city, obviously, and they were told, a wall of wood alone shall be uncaptured, a boon, an aid to you and your children. Now, some Athenians thought that this wall of wood was the literal wooden temple door of Athena on the Acropolis. Obviously, they were wrong. Themistocles, on the other hand, the great brilliant Themistocles, took it to mean the building of a fleet of wooden ships for the defense of the city. And in 479, when Xerxes invaded and burned the Acropolis, Themistocles was proven right at the Battle of Salamis. Now finally, Apollo as this obscure, terrible god who only makes his presence known from afar is actually already present in the text of the Iliad. Apollo is challenged to a fight by the god Poseidon and actually refuses to face up to him at close quarters. Shaker of the earth, you could not say I was sound of mind if I were to go to war with you for the sake of pitiful mortals. These mortals who now, like leaves, break forth full of fire, feeding on the fruits of the earth, and then waste away, heartless. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video at all, if you found it fun or informative or interesting, hit the like button and subscribe. I actually would appreciate it very much. And actually, next time we come to Apollo, we'll take a look at him as the god of music and the lyre. All right, have a good day. Thank you guys very much.